Why did the Yankees drop that first game to the Astros and the ALCS? Well, let's talk about that. Well, 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 welcome back to New York Sports Wikimedia. I am Watt2K99. Thank you for taking the time to watch this video. If you enjoy what you're watching, a uh, thumbs up's a great way to show it. This is a historic moment in the event of New York Sports Wikimedia. For the first time, I'm doing a Yankees video. Now, those of you who know me know I'm a diehard Mets fan. I don't consider myself a Yankees hater. Gonna be fair, gonna be objective. Just like all Yankees fans are with the Mets and all Mets fans are with the Yankees. That alone makes me different. So here's what I want to say about this game. First of all, I'm going to give some credit to Jameson Tyon, or as the one uh, Astros reporter called him in the press conference, uh, Italian, the Italian guy. That was just hysterical. They couldn't pronounce Tyon. I mean, it's kind of your job to know how to pronounce these players' names. I mean, we're not talking about trying to pronounce Higashioka. It was Tyon. It's only two syllables, buddy. But the fact that he went four and a third innings and allowed one run, you know, you couldn't really ask for a whole lot more than what he gave you uh, in that game. But you know what? The game comes down to this lineup. Now, there's a lot of Yankee fans blaming the fatigue, talking about, well, we just had to you know, play game five against Cleveland. Well, last I checked, uh, they had a day off before game five. And yes, the Astros have had rest, but you know what? What does that do? Baseball is not a game where having a lot of rest or having a bye necessarily, I want to say guarantee success, it doesn't necessarily lean towards success either. You know, ask the, ask the LA Dodgers how that worked for them. Okay, you know, ask the Atlanta Braves how that worked for them. You know, the eliminated Atlanta Braves. Just want to point that out again. You know, it doesn't guarantee you anything. And the fact of the matter is, even though the Yankees have been playing a lot of games, I wonder about this roster construction, about this lineup construction. Now, it's a big loss for them that Andrew Benatendi and DJ LeMahieu, you know, great professional hitters or very, very good professional hitters, are not available for this series. But the Yankees have only 12 position players, so you're going to have to play a couple of guys who you may not have a lot of confidence in. One of them is your backup catcher. Another one is uh, LaCastro, who's basically a, a pinch runner and defensive specialist. That kind of limits your options. But some of these maneuvers that Aaron Booth, the data applicator, made, I just don't understand. You had Giancarlo Stanton starting in the outfield. First time since July 21st he's done that. Matt Carpenter, his first start since August 8th. Frankie Montas makes his first appearance since September 16th. It's been a month since anybody's seen him. Uh, Miguel Castro actually resurfaced. Who even knew he was still around? And he was actually decent once the game was out of hand in the ninth inning. But the way this lineup was made, I mean, putting up Josh Donaldson and Matt Carpenter in these pivotal spots, six strikeouts between them, each of them whiffs twice with two runners on uh, against some of those pitches were like a foot out of the strike zone. But, you know what, they had a chance to knock out Justin Verlander early, the Yankees did. Uh, but they couldn't do it. He retired his last 11. The Yankees, on the other hand, they struck out 17 times. 17 times! Houston, by comparison, struck out only twice. And you can't blame that on cheating. If, you, if you're one of these folks who just talks about it, the Astros cheat, the Astros cheat. They did cheat. It's over. They're a good team. Just give Houston some respect that they have talent. When you've been to the league championship series for six straight years, you're pretty freaking good. And I'm still a little bit bitter at them for losing to Washington and losing to Atlanta, but but we'll get we'll talk about that another time. But if the Yankees, if the best they can do with this offense is only hit two solo home runs, if that's going to count for every run that they score, they're not winning the series. The series is not even going to come back to Houston if all they can score is two runs a game. Okay? And this was actually interesting. I thought this was amazing. This was the first time all season the Yankees had an in-game lead against the Astros. The only two times they led the Astros at all 
was after a walk-off home run by Aaron Judge. That happened twice earlier this season. But they've never led in the course of a game against Houston until tonight when uh, Harrison Bader hit, uh, hit his home run and uh, against Verlander. But Verlander, as we said, uh, definitely settled down. And here's the thing with the Astros. It wasn't Alvarez. It wasn't Bregman. It wasn't those guys that are killing you. You're, you're talking about giving up home runs like Clark Schmidt, giving up home runs, uh, hanging up those sliders, giving up home runs to Gurriel, who has not had a very good regular season. Chaz McCormick. I, I didn't even know who Chaz McCormick was I, I, up until maybe a week ago. I never even heard of him. So if I'm Aaron Boone, if I'm the data applicator, a couple of things do have to change. First of all, uh, I think you got to play these kids. You got to play Peraza. You got to play Cabrera. So I put Peraza in at shortstop. I put Cabrera in his D as a DH. If you want to leave Stan in right field, fine. Uh, in I'm sorry, in the outfield, fine. Judges right field. Stan was left field. So if you want to leave uh, Stan there in the in left field, that's fine. Uh, put IKF at third. As I said, Peraza at shortstop, and uh, you can leave Carpenter. I, and I would I, honestly, I just don't feel it with Josh Donaldson right now. I'm not sure that's the player that you want in this lineup. I would give these two kids, uh, Cabrera and Peraza, um, a shot to uh, play in the ALCS. If you believe in these kids, you got to put. Um, they got to jump in the pool, see if they can swim. Yeah, once you saw this lineup, if you're a Yankee fan, you had to have questions already. You already had, had to have a pretty uh, sinking feeling in your stomach. But, you know, with Ty on against Verlander, what were, you know, you couldn't have been that confident either. So, hey, Yankees win game two. You know, they've uh, they got the Astros right, right where they want them. All right, well, that's all we got right now. Oh, I want to thank everybody who tuned into the Jets Chaos Show uh, Wednesday night, late Wednesday night, and saw me take down 12 hot dogs. Jeremy did. It was uh, 12 or 13 shots of hot sauce. Oh, man, he was uh, – that head of his was turning red. I was I was sweating, and, uh, yeah, I want to thank everybody who uh, watched and uh, took the time to give. We uh, definitely appreciate it. For sure. And you can check that out at the Jets Chaos channel. All right. Well, the football weekend is approaching us. I'll come, uh, I'll be back with my usual content. I'm going to have my confidence picks. That'll be later on Thursday. Then we'll have the Jets Broncos preview and the five bowl predictions for Jets versus Broncos. Thank you very much for joining me. And I'll see you back here with more content from you know where the Wicker Channel.